Hello, now a lot of people have wanted a video on voice diaphragms, so that's a voice diaphragm, and what we're going to do in this video is take a look at several different masks of different types of voice diaphragms, and sort of judge how effective they are. Now, with any voice diaphragm, there is always a system that makes it more effective, and that is the size of it. The bigger the voice diaphragm, the louder you generally are, and the more clearer people can hear you. I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions to this rule as better voice diaphragms are developed, but for the most part, if you have a big voice diaphragm like one of these, people can hear you clearer than if you've got a small one. So, the funny thing is a lot of people say, oh, the Soviet masks have really good voice diaphragms, how come the Soviets were so ahead of everybody else? In a lot of ways they weren't, it's just that they like to put big voice diaphragms on the mask. I imagine bigger ones are actually easier to manufacture than smaller ones, because you don't have to like downsize any components, you can make them big. Um, and obviously having a big voice diaphragm gives it a larger surface area to work. So how do voice diaphragms work? Generally you either have this kind of film material, uh, a bit like cling film, I think some of them could technically be a type of silicon or you use a metal plate and that's in a housing like here in the nose on this mask and how it works is when you speak that's an airtight seal on there you generally have washers on either side to make sure it stays tight when you speak that film uh, vibrates so it's like if you beat a drum you know the drum skin would vibrate it's the exact same principle we've all with the metal or the film uh, so your voice hits it, it vibrates, that makes noise because obviously sound is vibration Another factor of a mask that makes uh, noise is the exhale valves. The bigger the exhale valves and the more of them, the clearer you'll hear somebody as well. It's why people sound muffled on SHM masks like the GP5, because simply the exhale valve is very small and there's no voice diaphragm. Whereas if you then gave somebody another mask that has no voice diaphragm but it's got a bigger exhale valve, they'd become more audible. So there's lots of different factors like that. So let me show you a Soviet voice diaphragm now to show you how that one works. Okay, so here's my MM1 on its display headpiece with the tank crewman's helmet on. But what we want to have a look at is this thing, the voice diaphragm. So you unscrew it this way to take it off, counterclockwise. Now the important thing to note with these voice diaphragms is often on these old masks they get jammed just simply because they're old and, you know, bits have rusted or whatever. So if these aren't coming off easily, forcing it might break the mask, I'm not too sure, um, because I've had people before say to me, I can't get a voice diaphragm for my Soviet mask. You do just literally twist it like that, but if it's obviously rusted and everything inside, you're probably not going to get it off. So, you first take the front cover off, then you get the second cover, one of these metal grills. Then there is basically a big plastic washer. Let's see if I can get that out, it sits in quite tight, because this pushes against the sides of that. And um, what I can't really take out there, and so I wanted to rip it out and put a fresh one in, is like the drum skin that is, this is just made some some sort of thin plastic. I think this would be a weak point of the mask, but this is literally just, as you can see, a drum skin. So when you talk, it vibrates on the other side, and that's your voice assembly. So to put it back, we just literally do it in reverse. We put all the covers back on, and then we just simply screw this back together. So voice diaphragms are actually very simple. It's just literally getting something to vibrate so your voice is louder. Now, you might be aware that I've actually um, showed you on some of our other masks before. I think the Polish MC1 is an example of this, where rather than the voice diaphragm, they put a bit of metal wire after the exhale valve, the idea being that when you speak it um, vibrates amplifying what you've said that's come out the exhale valve. Not a perfect concept, it makes you sound a bit insect sort of like or robotic, but it will actually make it a bit easier for somebody else to understand what you're saying. Okay, so this is what a Soviet voice diaphragm sounds like when you have it on. Now it might be a bit louder than normal because I've not got a filter on which uh, means more air gets into the mask. But hopefully you can hear that it is fairly loud, and if you were speaking, somebody would be able to understand you quite easily. So obviously this is on the SHMS, which I've said many times before is probably the best design of all of the Soviet masks. First to put on, you can see very well of it because of the front-facing optical lenses, and you've got your voice diaphragm. So let's see if I can get this off. If it's too stuck, which I think it is, yeah, it's not coming off. 
And as I said, I'm not going to force these because you could probably rip the rubber of the mask by doing that. But the concept itself is very simple. Now let me fold the mask inwards. And as you can see, that's the inside of it. That's the sort of metal cover on the inside which the sort of rubber plate sits against. I'll just have another quick go to get this to unturn. Oh, it is unturning now. But as you can see, it's the exact same setup as the previous one. You can see, even see where a bit of condensation from my exhalation has gone on there. But it is literally like a drum beater with a cover on it. I imagine this cover is mostly for protection rather than actually helping to amplify noise, but as you can see it, or here, it does work very well when you put these on. And then start speaking through them, it's very uh, obvious what the person's saying. And again, I don't think the Soviet voice diaphragms are particularly incredibly well designed, it's just simply that they're a fairly big voice diaphragm as you can see on the masks. Now, the Soviet design is actually very good, because other than the PMG uh, one, which is a slightly different design, but very similar, all of these masks have standardised voice diaphragms. So you'll notice that the MM1 had the same voice diaphragm, the SHMS has it, the GP5Ms or PMG2s have that same voice diaphragm. It was a really uh, sort of easy design for the Soviets just to copy across onto all the masks once they developed it. So, yeah, that's the Soviet voice diaphragms. Now let's look at something that's an alternative to using a functional normal voice diaphragm that works fairly well as well. So here we have the Avon S10, which is one of my favourite masks, as many of you know. Uh, so how does this one work? So there's two methods of the voice coming out on this mask. There's a standard tiny voice diaphragm there that's designed for you to clip a radio onto, and that just works like any other voice diaphragm. Those are the blanking plugs on the other uh, Avon masks where they're actually removable. You can take the blanking plug out and see that there's literally a plastic disc that sits on the inside like that. And when you speak, that um, obviously vibrates. But you also have like what they'd call the primary voice trumpet on the front. So as you can see, what this is, is it's the exhale valve of the mask there. <laughs> but what happens is when you talk, that vibrates slightly. And then the inside of the mask's got this trumpet shape to it here. And what that means is the voice uh, amplifies a bit coming out there. So again, that's another simple way of doing it. And um, the Avon one's interesting because they've kind of tried to think around the box a bit with it. The idea being that if you're speaking on a radio anyway, that's clipped on there. And the microphone where it's clipped there is makes, makes you very easy to understand. I'm sure if I started talking to the camera like this, you'd hear me very easily, simply because that voice diaphragm is right next to the camera. That's the logic, but obviously the logic of this is that you can just use it, design the exhale valve in a way that makes it easier for people to hear you that way. Again, simple to use method in a sense, but when I get this back on, I might have to take the mask off to look at doing it properly. Um, but yeah, simple to use method that's actually fairly good way of thinking outside the box on how to do a voice diaphragm. You can also go down the route of the French M51 which is to have your voice diaphragm actually as the exhale valve where this isn't really a good idea as I've said before because what happens with these is it means it's very vulnerable to breaking because that's very thin rubber on a part that's going to be used quite often. Now this is kind of a good idea in principle but you know badly implemented really. So you have the exhale valve there then you could simply have, have a voice diaphragm in front of it with a bit of room around the outside for air to escape. But it should still work absolutely fine in terms of a voice diaphragm. Because as long as there's enough air hitting it, it's still going to vibrate it. So anyway, I'll just put this mask on so you can see this one as I talk. Right, there we go. Hopefully you can see when I talk that will move slightly. It might be hard for the camera to pick that up. But the idea is that when I talk that this uh, skin on here vibrates a little bit. And if I put my finger on it there, you can see that it actually is doing that. The more I talk, the more it moves. But yeah, the idea is simply of this that when you talk, the uh, skin on the voice diaphragm moves as it exhales there. And it's done in a way like a drum beater again. Where, you know... 
it's again it's a good idea in principle the problem with this mask is the parts made were you know a bit too thin i think to be useful but saying that these masks were probably never intended to be in service more than 20 years and unfortunately uh, the french government subsequently said oh we have this old mask it can stay in service it does not matter if these soldiers are guests so that was the logic behind it so Again, I don't think it's really the fault of the mask designers because they were probably told this mask was going to be in service for 20 odd years or at least new models of the mask would keep being made, but they weren't. So as a result, France made loads and loads of these masks in the early 50s and then if you're a soldier in the Gulf War, you still got this very same mask. Now it's probably going to be impossible to do up a dodgy old 60 year screw like that. So let me take the mask off and put that back. But hopefully this video has explained to you how voice diaphragms work. It's normally by having a tight piece of um, skin or some sort of you know rubber or metal pulled over a port where when sound waves hit it they cause it to vibrate. It works exactly like a drum skin does and that amplifies your voice. They're sometimes called voice emitters as well as voice diaphragms. But essentially they're very very simple in operation. The bigger they are normally the clearer the sound or the louder the sound. But I'm sure as technology improves, um, there are other ways of doing it. Some modern masks have um, like these voice emitter um, electric boxes, like voice amplifiers or something they call them, that basically snap onto the front of the mask where the XL valve is or the voice diaphragm. And then it's like a miniature megaphone that runs on the battery and amplifies sound going in one end to the other end. Again, I think they're a bit pointless. You can just do what the Avon S10 is and clip a radio microphone to speak to people on the radio there or otherwise people will hear you if you're speaking close to them anyway but yeah voice diaphragms are very useful if they're done right a mask with them is certainly better than a mask without them just for the sake of other people being able to hear you when you speak to them but obviously they need to be done in a way that doesn't compromise the safety of the mask so there you go that's a video all about voice diaphragms